Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Linux Mint Debian Edition 6, codenamed Fay, has just been released and we're going to take a closer look right after this. Now, the main distribution of Linux Mint has generally been based on Ubuntu, which itself has been built on Debian. With Linux Mint Debian Edition, as the name implies, instead of Ubuntu as has been tradition for the Mint team, they have built the distribution on top of Debian Stable, with their in-house Cinnamon desktop environment in addition to quite a few utilities to make things more accessible to a wider audience who might prefer a more traditional desktop experience. Without further ado, let's boot up the latest LMDE6 Fay ISO and get started. Here we go with our QEMU KVM machine. Let's select from the boot manager menu the uh, ISO boot media. And from the GNU grub menu, let's select the first entry, start LMDE6. Here we go with our Linux Mint boot logo, nice and green. Very attractive to some of us. And we're standing by for the uh, Cinnamon uh, desktop environment. And here we go. So let's uh, fix some things first. Let's go to the uh, Mint menu and open up System Settings. And from here, we select the Display System Setting and switch over to 1920 by 1080 resolution. And we'll keep that configuration. And uh, let's go to the fonts and add about 20% to the size of those fonts. So hopefully the audience can read what's written on the screen. Now we'll go ahead and do a simple install of Linux Mint. I'll double click on the installation icon. Let's go, LMDE6, Fay. English language is fine. United States is a good location. And uh, the time zone is correct. America, Los Angeles for myself. Uh, keyboard layout and variant is okay. And I'm gonna create the Steven account. I'm gonna make my computer name LMDE6-1 for this virtual machine. And I give myself a decent password. Enter it twice for good measure. Make sure I didn't typo. And as a good option here is encrypt my home folder. It's a good compromise between full disk encryption and no encryption at all. Automated installation. We'll select, um, I can do manual partitioning or whatever, but uh, we'll keep things simple today. Doing a simple review. We'll select the Virtual Machines VDA hard drive as the target for the automated installation. This will delete everything, yes. No partition table was found, it's a fresh drive, so we'll create one. Again, we'll erase all the data, which is fine. We can install it on the, the disk itself, or we can install Grub boot menu on one of the partitions. And you might want to consider that if you're having uh, multiple boot options, multiple operating systems already installed on your system. Just be careful with that. This is a test, so we just uh, use the virtual machine. Here's our summary. Uh, I'm gonna check that everything is correct. Looks like it. And uh, we'll continue here uh, with the installation. So we'll let the uh, system install. And uh, I'll take a little bit here. I'm going to edit this video to make sure that it's not boring you. And uh, standing by for the prompt to uh, restart the freshly installed system. And there it is. So we'll go ahead and click yes here because the installation is complete. 
we'll press enter to continue because the medium has already been removed, virtually speaking. And hopefully got a fresh LMDE6 system and looks like we have. Let's boot up. And we're doing the LTS kernel from Debian stable uh, bookworm. Kernel 6.1 dot something. And here we have the light DM display manager. Uh, we have several environments to choose from for troubleshooting. We'll just do the default cinnamon. I'll enter my password to log in. And here we go. Welcome to Linux Mint, your new operating system. Before we continue, let me go back into system settings, display, change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and click apply. This looks good. And because this is a demo, I will turn off power management so the machine and display uh, never go to sleep or turn off. Let's fix these tiny fonts, increasing it by 20%. As you can see, these are the Ubuntu standard fault, uh, fonts since this is um, they use a lot of Ubuntu things. Okay, welcome to Linux Mint. So, um, you won't show this dialogue at startup. Let's go. Desktop colors. Let's launch. See how beginner friendly this is. So, um, for my eyes, for my accessibility, I can choose um, various styles with the uh, dark appearance. And we'll deepen the uh, blue uh, theme highlights here. You can also go to advanced settings. This is your typical cinnamon theme uh, applet. You can change a lot of things like mouse pointer and other details. You can also download from the interwebs or internet uh, the most popular themes, including uh, the most popular, Adapta Nocto, which seems to have been popular for the last several years at least. Under settings, you can choose uh, what mode you prefer, etc., etc. As you can see, scroll bar configurations. Next, they want us to configure the system snapshots. Always a good idea. Even though this is an EXT4 system, not a ButterFS system, uh, you still want to configure snapshots. Uh, it will have to be rsync instead of butterfs, which is of course a lot slower on the ext4 system, but we're sticking with the defaults today. We'll uh, store the snapshots on VDA3, the main root partition. We'll do daily snapshots and we'll keep five of them. So the uh, snapshot scheduling has been enabled. As long as there's a space of more than one gig, it will do it. We'll ignore the files in Stevens home directory and root home directory. We'll exclude those files. We don't need those as part of the system snapshot. This is for disaster recovery. Okay, good. So the uh, time shift setup is now complete. We won't create anything today just to keep this video as short as possible. Next, uh, Let's install the multimedia codex. You probably want to do this if you want uh, to enjoy multimedia on your new uh, workstation, Linux Mint, Debian Edition workstation. Let it uh, do its magic. So this is it's pulling in packages from Debian as well as Mint. As you can see, it's basically a hybrid system, right? Uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition is built on top of Debian Stable Bookworm. So let it finish updating the cache. And then once that's done, uh, let's go ahead and let it, uh, first we have to authenticate, and then it will install the packages. By authentication, just put in the uh, user's password and that'll do a sudo. 
Okay, moving right along, let's launch the Update Manager. So welcome to Update Manager, the security updates, software updates, and of course the system snapshots, which we just configured for automated daily snapshots. So we'll go ahead. Um, do we want to switch to local mirror? No, not today. So we got some trivial updates here, Firefox, Grub theme, and uh, DNS lookup utility, nothing much. So let's enter our password here to uh, um, elevate permissions for sudo. And there we go. The system is fully updated. It's that simple. Let's go to the system settings. We've seen this already. But uh, let's poke around here in Cinnamon. It's been a, been a year or so since I last looked at Cinnamon. So you've got some uh, desktop images to choose from, not just the Linux Mint Debian edition, but also the uh, regular Ubuntu-based Linux Mint editions. Vanessa, Vera, Victoria. You can choose any one of the uh, uh, desktop wallpapers that are included with those releases. Plenty to choose from. Very nice. Don't have to go on Pexels or wherever and get your own wallpaper if you don't want to. You've got some to choose from here. So some desktop and window effects here. We've got again our font selection that we already used a couple times. And here's our theming configuration. Let's go and click on advanced settings. So you can change the uh, mouse pointer look. So you've got some selection of pointers right out of the box as installed. For the applications, you've got a uh, very rich selection of themes for the applications themselves, including the window decorations. And for the icons, you also have an equally rich selection, different colors and shapes of the icons. So uh, you can experiment to your heart's content with these. And for the desktop itself, i.e. the bottom taskbar and the uh, launch menu, you have these choices here. Again, plenty to play with, and they're more available online as well. Uh, fantastic choice out of the box with Linux Mint, even with the Debian edition, not just with the Ubuntu based edition. You've got some accessibility settings here. Um, I have enough accessibility for my own needs, um, but again, your needs may vary, obviously. But here are some accessibility settings. Cinnamon has done quite well with accessibility. I'm, I'm not an accessibility expert by any means, but uh, it looks fairly, fairly complete as it were. Um, let's look at the, uh, some of the uh, applets we can install. As you can see, these are available, already installed in the system actually. So we can manage them. You can enable them or disable them. You can also download uh, based on popular popularity, for example. Um, you can download additional applets. Here you go. Um, Cinnamon is not quite as uh, comprehensive in its applets ecosystem as compared to uh, GNOME, which it derives from an earlier GNOME. It's an earlier branch of GNOME. So let's take a look here. We've got some extensions, I think, here. Um, so you can download. These are older GNOME-like extensions. Wobbly Windows, Compiz, um, all kinds of little things that you might be missing from the old GNOME releases that you can install on your Cinnamon desktop. Very nice. Yeah. Let's go back here. So general, you can disable compositing if you need, and uh, 
a bullet timer. Memory limits, very handy. In case you find cinnamon to be uh, having memory leaks, you can tell it to restart. No gestures available since this is a virtual machine. So here we go, some panel configuration. You can change the size, height, appearance for left, center, and right zones, general panel options. So everything panel related is in, in this configuration item. Uh, for preferred applications, uh, as you install apps, uh, you can change the default uh, apps as needed. Same thing with removable media, fully con uh, configurable as you can see. For privacy, um, you can optionally, you know, for simplicity, some people prefer to remember recently accessed files in the uh, in the uh, start menu. Um, you can turn that off if you prefer, like if you share a system. And here you can configure the screen saver delay before starting it, etc, etc, the lock settings, what the lock screen looks like, set uh, more uh, detailed configurations here. So um, startup applications, very interesting. So here are all the applications that automatically start when you launch your Cinnamon session. You can also uh, configure a delay after login for when uh, a certain application starts. For example, with the Update Manager, if I click the uh, Edit button here, so you can change the commands, uh, the name, also the startup delay in seconds, right? You can change all that. So Cinnamon has a lot more configurability as opposed to GNOME, where it's basically GNOME developer's way or the highway. So if you prefer custom customization but prefer a GTK background, uh, Cinnamon might be a, a good choice for you. So window modes, title bar you can modify, behavior, you know, focus falls mouse, sloppy uh, focus mode or click window focus mode. Uh, what to do with the windows when they come to focus. You can change the draggable border width here, which is this here. So some folks prefer a wider draggable border, make it simpler to operate. Here you can configure what Alt Tab does in terms of uh, app switching, etc., etc. Yeah, lots of configuration here. You can. Configure your window tiling and snapping. We'll go into that in this video, but uh, yeah, you can tile your windows as you see fit in Cinnamon. You can configure your workspace options. Uh, if you allow cycling through workspaces, etc., etc. Go into that too much. Here's our Bluetooth. Uh, this virtual machine has no Bluetooth hardware. It's no pass through. So anyway, uh, you can set up your uh, monitor color profile. Here's our disk applet. So we've installed uh, Linux Mint on the 137 gigabyte hard disk. So the uh, first partition, three partitions. First is the FAT uh, EFI partition, 300 megs for that. It's not much room for many kernels with 300 megs, right? 8.7 gigs swap partition, and then the ext4 encrypted uh, uh, the ext4 root partition, which contains the uh, the encrypted home partition. And I'll show you a little more detail in a moment. All right, display. We've got everything there. Um, here's some mouse configuration that you can set. For example, you can change play with the uh, for accessibility, right? The uh, the pointer size, which aids in vision, and you can also do the same thing for the uh, touchpad. Say if you're on a laptop, um, it's 
scroll directions, two finger scrolling, speed, etc., etc. So lots to configure. Networking. So we've got a wired configuration here on my private virtual network. So you can add, for example, uh, VPN. So primarily OpenVPN is already configured. You have to add packages for other VPN uh, protocols. You can also import from a OpenVPN uh, configuration file. So all I need is, all I use is OpenVPN. So that would be enough for me. Just add more packages, um, check the documentation if you have other VPN requirements. Power management, we already looked at. Printers, we don't bother with. Sound, system info. So this is the kernel we're currently running. It's LMDE6 Fay, Debian based on um, Bookworm. And we're running a QEMU Virt IO GPU. That's our graphics interface. They also include the uncomplicated firewall, the GUI for it. As you can see, it's ready to get going here if you need a firewall. I recommend you enable it if you can. We've got three profiles, office, public, and home. So um, yeah, very convenient for getting going quickly after post-install of LMDE. Login window, that's the uh, light display manager or light DM. You can configure pretty much everything, including appearance, uh, theming, fonts, monitor configurations, pretty much everything. Light DM is very configurable uh, from the GUI. Under users, you know, what you want to see a user list or not. Settings. Uh, High DPI support, monitor configuration, what you want to show, host name, time, etc., etc. So I'll let you guys play with that. Software sources. Let me enter the password here. So yeah, you've got main, the Fay Linux Mint uh, mirror for the repository, and also it's built on the base of Bookworm from Debian directly. You can add your additional repositories here, should you choose. Here are your authentication keys go. You can perform some maintenance, kind of very similar to uh, regular Debian and Ubuntu. All right, users and groups, the final system setting configuration item. So here you can manage uh, your users, including the group membership. So these are the pre-configured system groups and you can basically select which groups uh, users should belong to. Steven is an administrator account type. Here are the system groups. So you can add and, and edit and delete um, additional uh, groups that are available for users. And those are the system settings. Next up uh, in the welcome panel, uh, they suggest to take a look at Software Manager. And Software Manager is one of the uh, utilities uh, that the Linux Mint team provides for uh, Mint users. As you can see, FlatHub is already configured, which I like to see. So instead of Ubuntu snaps, you've got Flatpak here. And I, uh, I find my workflow with Flatpak is, is perfectly fine. Uh, you may not prefer Flatpak. You can have options of installing from other repos, you know, like Snaps if you prefer. Uh, but Flatpak is fine, right? So let's take a look at uh, what we've got for LibreOffice. Always good to have LibreOffice here for a user workstation. So you've got LibreOffice from FlatHub. And as you can see with the green check marks, you already have LibreOffice. Uh, installed as regular Debian packages. Looks like not from Flatpak, not from Snaps because Linux Mint does not use Snaps out of the box. So uh, LibreOffice is a system package here, for example, that was installed using um, 
uh, from the get-go from using the Linux Mint installer. But if you use the flat pack, you've got a later version, 7.6.2.1, right? But the uh, system version, system package, is actually version 747, which I believe is last year's version. And uh, yeah, so I would actually go into the uh, launch menu here off under Office and just uninstall the uh, system packages and then go to Software Manager and install the Flatpak version. Uh, because I prefer uh, fresher versions from FlatHub um, because it seems like every update they make LibreOffice more compatible with Microsoft Office, which can come in handy. Okay, next uh, we have Firewall. We'll skip that. So we just looked at that. Under Documentation, so Documentation is web-based and online. So we've got a nice uh, installation guide, troubleshooting guide, uh, for developers, uh, translations and developer guide. Very nice. So I'll let you um, browse at your convenience. Here are the release notes, probably also from the uh, Linux Mint website. And sure enough, you can see, ah, they have an expert mode installer. I might take a look at that at some other video. I want to keep things simple today and just take a quick look at LMD is six, but that might be interesting. Let's see, what Firefox did they install? This is a system package. 118.0.1 as released, as the initial release of LMD E6. So yeah, that's the a recent version of Firefox, not the ESR version like you would get with, I think is what you get with um, uh, Debian Stable. Anyway, yeah, that's something to uh, investigate. Maybe you guys can leave comments uh, as to how the expert mode works for you. Under help, we've got the web forums. So let's launch that. It launches Firefox again. Tiny fonts, sorry folks. Let me make them a little bigger. Full screen it. So as you can see, we've got tens of thousands of topics and tens of thousands of posts. Many tens of thousands of posts. Oh, there's an add. Can we close that? That's a useful add, right? PDF. Anyway, um, as, as you can see, if you have a question, always check in the forums first. There is a distinct possibility that the question has already been asked. Also the IRC chat room, we'll skip that for now. And under the con contribute tab, let's uh, it's a great project. Yeah, I would agree. It's a great project. They need contributors. Um, for example, financial help, if you'd like to help them out. I'm sure a little bit of money would go a long way if you can spare it. I've been around a long time helping people get gently introduced into Linux. I think that deserves support. Very good. All right, so let's close the welcome app. Let's open up the terminal. Let's increase the font size to something readable. So as installed, this is an ext4 file system, so the usage percentage should be accurate. So the root system is takes uh, uh, 16 gigs as installed. That may already include a snapshot, I'm not sure. Uh, let's check uh, how the home directory has been mounted. As you can see, it's a private mount, ecrypt file system, and the cipher uh, is uh, AES. So there you go. I think this is a lot more plausible deniability should you run into some nefarious government agent you might have questions if you've got your whole disk encrypted. You know, just being able to log in 
with your password and unencrypt your home directory might work better for you. It may work better against a, a rubber hose uh, decrypt attack, <laughs> if you get what I mean. So it's built on Debian Bookworm, as you can see. So if you do a sudo apt update, you can do that as well. You don't have to use the software manager or the update manager. You can see it's got the uh, standard Debian Bookworm repositories in addition to the uh, Linux Mint Packages repository. So there you go. Um, yeah. So you're pulling in a lot of security uh, packages from the Bookworm rep repos. You don't see any face with the security uh, repo. That's fine. The base needs security, right? So uh, the Etsy apt sources.list file is empty, so it's probably in the uh, sources.list.d directory. Let's take a look at that. Ah, here are the official repositories list. And uh, yeah, you don't edit this file manually, use software sources instead, which is fine, but here you go. So this is where the uh, repository configuration is stored for the uh, installed Linux Mint system, Debian edition. All right, NeoFetch is already installed. This is what we're currently running. Cinnamon 5.8.4. Typically, I, I think I didn't see this in system info, uh, the Cinnamon version, which is odd. I may be misremembering, but uh, here it is. This is Cinnamon 5.8.4, which is a very recent fresh version. Since we're running Mint, that's their in-house version of Cinnamon, which is they are also developers of. Here are the accessories that is included, graphics, internet, including Thunderbird email and transmission uh, BitTorrent client. You can also set up web apps here, Office, as you can see, LibreOffice, sound and videos, uh, celluloid, movies, rhythm box, music player, administration, a bunch of administrative tools, including terminal and time shift, all the rest, preferences we already uh, glanced through briefly earlier in this video. Here are your places and recent files, and you can set uh, the recent documents that you've opened, if it, if it shows or not, in the privacy settings, if you recall, in system settings. All right. And that's it for our brief overview. Now you could just install Debian Bookworm along with the Cinnamon desktop environment and end up with something broadly similar but then you would not have the latest Cinnamon version along with all the useful utilities, themes, and customization out of the box. As with the standard Ubuntu-based Linux Mint, the Debian edition seems to be targeted at a very wide audience, including those people starting out with Linux, who want to quickly install a complete system and just get to work without having to spend hours configuring one of the more so-called advanced distributions. In this regard, I believe the Linux Mint team has succeeded in its mission with LMDE 6 with a highly polished and beginner-friendly release perhaps worthy of your consideration. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, and please smash the like button and subscribe to help with the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, take care and have lots of fun.